Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'll apologize up front if my voice seems a little coarse. I have a little bit of a head cold going, but we soldier on. Uh, we're going to work today on a reel in a bag project that was sent in by Milan or Mylon. Uh, it's a Pen 330 GT. It's the first edition of the reel. And uh, he uh, took it apart, started servicing it, and then I guess got a little bit lost along the way and asked me if I couldn't put it back together for him. Well, I took a quick look at the parts. I wanted to do an inventory before I get involved in the reel in the bag projects. And I noticed that the fishing reel itself was all there, but the drag washers and the metal washers were suffering a common problem with this particular line of reels. And that is that they're very well worn and uh, scarred and the like, and they, well, they need a full set of replacement washers. And I went out and ordered them before I went and did anything that had to do with trying to uh, reassemble the reel. So you can see that there's a lot of wear on these. These should be nice and shiny and, and uh, metal-wise. That's all the old uh, drag washers being transferred over. And if you look, we've lost the cross hatching on the drag washers themselves. And well, they just need to be uh, replaced with new. I just got the shipment in. So that's our project of the day. And uh, we'll take a look at um, how to do this. If you have one of these reels and you're interested in seeing how it's serviced, well, the taking apart seems to be the easy part. And uh, there are other videos that I've put on the channel, but if you have yours apart, well, one of the things we'll do here is we'll show you how to put it back together again. And while we're doing that, we'll kind of take you through the, uh, the steps to uh, get this one fishing again. Well, if you like these kinds of videos, if you want to see how these reels are serviced, if you like all kinds of fishing reels and fishing reel service, then one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button to uh, let you know when I'm posting. And uh, well, you'll see all kinds of fishing reels that I do, and you can make a decision as to which ones you like to see. Well, one of the things he didn't do was to remove the gear sleeve. I kind of got that started. You push a pin out on this side that holds into a ridge on the gear sleeve itself. And sometimes you need just to pull it out a little bit more. You can take it out all the way. I kind of like to leave it seated if I can. It makes it easier on the reinstall. But if it pulls out, don't worry about it. We'll show you how to get that done. You want to remove the gear sleeve because a lot of times you're going to find that there is dried grease like right there on that uh, crevice that all needs to be cleaned out there's a channel in there and this groove here is the groove that the pin rides in for the the gear sleeve itself a lot of times some folks will say you know i have a, a reel and there's a lot of in and out movement on that uh, handle well, that's because either this slot has become elongated or the pin has uh, become worn. And sometimes it means you need to replace the whole bridge. Well, we're going to just uh, take a moment here, clean off your gear sleeve, oil the bearing, and then we'll take a light coating of grease, once I found my grease brush, and please use fishing reel grease when you do this. It's, it's designed for fishing reels. It's going to make it last the longest. I'm using a pen precision reel grease here. It's a blue grease. Not because the reel is a pen, but because it's, well, it's fishing reel grease. And I prefer to, to use those. I'm not uh, a chemist by any stretch of the imagination, but I do know that it works. All right, well, we've reinstalled that. There's a little uh, collar that uh, is here that belongs inside the main gear. It's kind of pressed in, so we'll just kind of we'll just kind of do that. We'll tap it back in. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that the main gear is clean. This one has some old greases inside the teeth. So what we'll do here is we'll get a wire brush. I'm going to use a wire brush. You can use a bristle brush. You can use a toothbrush. You can use a brass brush. Whatever. 
just find a way to get into those teeth. You can see all of the old stuff that's getting pulled out here. And I pull it away and generally I put it onto a paper towel so that it doesn't accumulate on my, my desk. All right, those look good. Inspect the teeth next. Make sure that they're not only are the grooves clean, but all of the, uh, the teeth are uniform. They're not bent or chipped or cracked in any regard. Once we do that, we can go ahead and put the grease on. And while I'm doing that, I'll encourage you to ask questions if you have any regarding fishing reel service in general. This reel in particular, if you like, or uh, maybe another reel you're working on that uh, maybe you're stuck on. Okay, we're going to grease that up. And then before I do that, I want to clean this up as well. This is the gear shaft. And you want to make sure that that is free of the old salts and the waters that may have gotten in there and so on. We saw that there was quite an issue there with the worn dry washers. So we want to make sure that all of that is, is gone. Same thing with the threads here. Make sure you clean the threads where the star adjuster is going to go. That uh, could be problematic later if you don't. Let's take that uh, main gear then, put that back on. And once that is on, we can go to the new drag washers and you'll see the difference right away between the old stack and the new stack. I got these from uh, mysticparts.com. They are an authorized pen uh, parts uh, distributor. If the parts are available, they generally have them. And if they're not, they can tell you either if there's a substitute part or if the, uh, the parts are no longer available and you need to go find them on the used market. Well, these are kind of interesting drag washers. So they're the same size and same dimension as a Penn Senator uh, drag washer, but they're much thinner. So if you do try to uh, substitute the Penn Senator washers, you're not going to fit them in the drag stack. These are uh, optional to grease. I'm going to use a grease on these. I'm using Cal's Universal Grease. And the order, well, we have five drags in the stack. We have three keyed washers, and we have two what are called eared washers, and they alternate starting with a keyed washer. Just leave a sheen on there. If you put more grease on than that, it's only going to squeeze out. So just use the sheen. Wipe off any excess, and I'm using a glove here as a tool, but also to keep the grease off my hands. So the first one in was the keyed one, or the one that has the rectangular center to it. The second one in is an eared washer, and we're alternating now. So this is your third washer. That'll be the keyed one again. Make sure that they go flat and that they get all the way down. I'm noticing that this one is kind of hung just a little bit here. Next one in then will be the eared washer and then we'll finish up top with the keyed washer and a cap washer. If you have a question on where these pieces and parts belong, then the best thing to do is go to the schematic the schematic is also available on that site from mysticrealparts.com uh, and you can uh, see the orders and sequences of any of this. And if this is the first time, let's say you were purchasing these from say a flea market or online, somebody presented it this way, um, well that's uh, a good place to start. Get the schematics, make sure that all of your pieces and parts are there usable and then order the parts that you may need and then you can reassemble. Well you can see the difference in this deck with the worn washers and the others and I'm sure that the performance is going to improve dramatically as a result. All right so we've just rebuilt the main gear, we've inspected it and uh, that's ready for a reinstall. I probably should note that I've already taken care to service the balance of this reel. There's a ball bearing on this side that we took out and we cleaned. We've removed the pole and uh, cleaned out the worm gear, re-oiled the, uh, the line guide and assembly. I also had to reinstall 
the eccentric spring and the eccentric on that. But again, this one's about how to put the rest of the pieces and parts back together, get this reel out there fishing again. Well, next up then, we want to install the, the pinion assembly. It starts with two screws that sit, uh, springs, well, I want to call them screws all the time, springs, they sit in this little cavity. This is a balancing act on this one. Uh, most of the time, the pen reels have a little bit deeper cavity, not this one. Also, worthy to note, there's two series of this. There's the GT1 and the GT2. The GT1s uh, were made in the U.S. The GT2, you're going to find them made in both places, uh, places the places being uh, the U.S. and then they shifted production to China. So just, if you're interested in a USA made reel, just make sure you check to see that it says made in the USA. If it doesn't say that, it wasn't. All right, we've just checked the pinion gear. Now we're uh, greasing the yoke. The yoke slides into the slot on the pinion gear and the slot here, the bigger slot, faces out to accept the spool. You want to put the two holes in the yoke aligned with the centers of the spring and then our jack goes over the top and it hooks into the stud and make sure you have it on the other side of that little guide post there. That is the assembly for the yoke and pinion gear. Well it's always fun with this one. This is your anti-reverse dog and spring and uh, I, I would bet most of the time folks kind of get stuck there if they're coming back on a reassembly. You want to take your main bridge now, put the whole thing in, align it and make sure that that pinion gear centers into the hole in the bearing. That's going to allow you to align these two studs now. And when you press down, that bridge is going to be properly seated. The problem that you always have with these, or I always have with these, is aligning that um, anti-reverse dog so that it uh, functions properly. Well, we showed you how to do that. Let me show you where the dog is going to go. The dog is going to ride on this stud piece here. So with it kind of in like this, you can just get it in there. You don't have to get it on, but you do. You could and should probably get it positioned so that you can maneuver it later. I'm just going to lay that there. Now I'll bring this back over. We'll do this again. All right, now we're set. We have the two pins. We have the dog in there. It's not set right. Don't worry about it. But we're going to go turn this over. And we're going to put a couple of these bridge screws in. There's two bridge screws that are fully threaded and there's two bridge screws that are partially threaded. The partially threaded ones go up top so that they go inside the spring and the spring doesn't catch on threads. I do this I don't want to tighten it down all the way I'm using these more to hold the bridge so that I can go back and work on that anti-reverse dog but right now I can take the pressure off now now there's a hole in that anti-reverse dog and it's nowhere near where the hole for the screw is so now I'll use a little pliers to walk it up and over and I'll use a, an awl to center that hole and now I should be able to work that screw in for that anti-reverse dog. Again, we're out of position on that. Don't worry about it. And now we should be able to pull that down. Once it's centered, tighten that screw up. And I've still got all of these loose. This bridge is temperamental sometimes. It's a little bit hard to get all the screws started. Once you get them started, they're fine. As I put the last one in, now we can make sure that all of these get tight. 
Well, you notice I left the spring on that anti-reverse dog. If you took the spring off, that's okay. But to me, it's generally easier to install that spring when one side of it is already on that clip. Let's make sure they're all tightened down. And now we want to just grab the ring of that spring. And that goes on this little post here on the side. So I'm going to, well, I guess it fell off anyway. All right, well, that happens. I'll show you how to do it if you took it off on both sides. I like to put it over the, the uh, anti-reverse dog side first. I'm going to use the micro pliers to do that. Go over the top of the one. Hook it. And then bring it up to the post on the other. And you'll play around with it from time to time, but it will eventually you'll hook it on there. When you have that hooked, that's how it looks. And then you should be able to turn it and make sure it's functioning. You can hear it clicking and see it ticking, if you will. So that's the side plate. Next up then, we want to put our gear spacer on there, your sleeve spacer. We'll clean up this um, the chrome on the star adjuster. And then we can install that. And with the new drags in there, this one will have a nice range of motion to it. With a little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool, let's take the side plate. There's notches in the side plate that are going to enable you to set these in. So make sure that you're aligned with those notches. And then it should be a nice easy installation and you should have a nice tight seam all the way around the rim. Well there's four screws that go in next. They're all the same size so it doesn't matter which screw goes in which hole. But if you're taking a reel apart you want to pay attention to the screws that you take out when you take them out. Not all of the reels are designed with equal uh, screw lengths, and that includes the pen reels. So if you're working on an earlier pen reel, maybe a squitter or a jig master or maybe a long beach reel or something like that, the screws that go into the reel seat are shorter than the screws that go into the cross post. So just make a note of that when you're doing that. It's just a good practice as you're servicing fishing reels to make sure that that gets done properly. All right, there's one more of those. We'll get back to putting the business side together here. We'll get the handle on and we'll get this one ready to go fishing again for Mylon. Okay, so the, the reel is on, the spool is on. I want to hold the tension on the spool now. I want to tighten down this drag. You want to make sure that you tighten your drag down so that when you go to install the handle, you don't trap the star adjuster. Oh, there's a little bit of, of dirt and like on this handle, so let's clean that up while we're at it. I'm using just a kitchen scrubby pad, and I'm using a, uh, a rod and reel cleaner for shining. Oh. Looks like we're missing a screw. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I will... Uh, See what I can do to locate one of those after the video is over. It's not in the uh, not in a bunch right now. I do have some spare s screws there. We'll see what we can do. All right, let's just continue. Then we'll put the handle on that fits over the shoulder. The gear sleeve is a little worn on both sides, but we're okay. And then we want to make sure that you seat the handle screw squarely and just make sure you tighten it down with your hand as best you can. This one's a little tight so I'm just going to move over to the, the wrench a little bit sooner than I might normally have done that. 
This one uses the handle screw from the bigger series of reels, 4-0 senators and the like. You saw the gear sleeve was longer and wider. But we're just about ready for a test. I guess I will go back and see if we can't find one of those screws for the last one that's missing. And when you get down to the point where you're just about tightened up, then you want to start looking for the scallop that matches the hole for your, your hold down screw. And I guess we're just about there. There's one more screw in my parts tray. So we'll take our time to put that in. That's your hold down screw. And while I do that, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everyone who works to keep us safe on a daily basis. Thanks for all you do. All right, tighten down. First thing we want to do is go into free spool, make sure that the spool spins nice and easily. It does. I'm going to leave this on here. This appears to be backing for braid, so we'll leave that on. This is your spool adjuster. If you want to enable the spool to spin faster, you're going to turn it in a counterclockwise manner. This one's buttoned down all the way. And I can't even turn it with finger strength. If you back it off a little bit, it will turn faster. And if you want it uh, to turn at its slowest, well then button it down the way it was. Let's go into gear and check. Nice smooth operating reel. And of course we know the drags are going to hold because, well, <laughs> they're a nice fresh set. And even more importantly, they're going to, to work throughout the range of variability that they were designed for. The way that the drag stack was in previously, it was all frozen together, and you had all or nothing at all. Well, once you determine that your drag stack is working, back it off. You don't want to uh, have anything result in premature uh, wear on those, and you don't want to squeeze that lubrication that we had out of there. So back your drag off when you go to store. Well, that's it. That's the Pen 330 GTI and how to get a reel working. That was a fishing reel in the bag project, but also showed you how to replace the, the drag store stack. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video. And again, if you like these types of videos, please subscribe. And uh, if you do subscribe, use that notification button. To everybody, I'm wishing you tight lines and great days on the water. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.